Want to learn a little bit more about the basic authentication in Windows 10 OpenSSH server? Join us as that discussion is starting right now. Thank you for joining us here. We're back on more Windows 10 OpenSSH server. Uh, and in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you a little bit about the basic authentication behind OpenSSH running in Windows 10 to help you out. We've gotten some comments and some feedback from our previous, some of our previous OpenSSH videos and we've heard you out there and we'd like to uh, just kind of take you a little uh, through, a, you know, a walk through some of the basic authentication, hopefully clear up uh, any, uh, you know, maybe doubts you might have in the software. Now in this uh, video, I'm gonna go ahead and let you know what we have uh, as far as our demo and our setup. Uh, those of you that have been following along with us in uh, the previous video that we did, same setup, you can you know, just skip ahead a little bit if you want. Now, for those of you that are just tuning in, what I'm running here are two different machines. Join me here. I'm running a Windows 10 machine that is running the SSH client, and that's what we're gonna use in order to connect back to our Windows, S, uh, Windows 10 um, machine that's running the open SSH server service, if you will. Uh, and that's this machine right here. And what we want to do is we want to take a little bit of time and just show you what's going on with the authentication. Now, let's go ahead and let's get started here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up PowerShell. We've already got the services installed. The services are running. And like I said, if you haven't seen how to do that, check out our previous video on how to get the uh, OpenSSH client and server services up and running uh, in via PowerShell on Windows 10. Now, in order to make our connection here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna type SSH. And here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type a user account, a username, if you will, but it's a user account that's on the open SSH server. And that's very important. In one of the very first videos that we did when we used the open SSH client on Windows 10 to connect to our open SSH server, some of our viewers didn't actually understand where the authentication was uh, coming from or uh, what we were actually doing. And that's the purpose of this video. When I type SSH, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type a username of an account that's actually on the SSH server. And that's very, very important to understand. So for me, it's studio two. That is an account on my machine running the OpenSSH server. And then for me, I'm just going to type the local IP address of the SSH server, uh, and I'm going to hit enter. Now, when I hit enter, oh, it looks like it is not doing that. Let me go ahead and close this down. Remember that uh, you might have to be uh, running as an administrator, so you might have to run an administrative command prompt, and that is important to keep in mind here. All right, let me go ahead and just uh, fire up this administrative uh, PowerShell uh, interface. And I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen here. Uh, in fact, let me give us a little bit more real estate there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to type SSH. I'm going to type student 02, keeping in mind that that's an account on the open SSH server. And then I'm going to type the local uh, IP address of our SSH server. For me, that's 10.0.13.1. And we're going to hit enter. Now, what you're seeing right here is notice that it says the authenticity of host and then it gives the IP address cannot be established. All right. And what that means is our SSH server has created a self signed identity, which means when we, in the last video, when we started the SSH server, uh, server service, it generated what's known as a host key. All right, that host key is kind of like your digital driver's license. All right, think about it that way. And what the server is doing is it's presenting back to the client that we're making the connection from. It's saying, here's my identity. And for us, because this isn't a known identity beforehand, it's telling us we better be aware of who this server is. If we're not, then we're just connecting to any old server and there could be security vulnerabilities. But since this is an SSH server that we stood up and we're in control of, I know that that server uh, is valid and that I can trust it. Now, notice that it's, it, it's letting me know this ahead of time, all right? Let me show you what happens here. When I type yes, then it's gonna ask me for a password. All right, and this is where sometimes it gets confusing because it's asking you twice. First to verify that the server is okay, and then once you verify that, it's now asking you to put in the password of the student O2 account, keeping in mind that that's an account on the OpenSSH server. So for me, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna authenticate, and now you can see, uh, based on my, um, my machine names to help us out, keep uh, track of where we're at, this is student O2, 
on my Win 10 SSH server. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit exit out of this and we're gonna just clear the screen. Now I'm back in a normal PowerShell prompt on my local SSH client, the machine that I was running the client on, all right? Now I want you to see what happens when I run the same SSH command again. All right, keeping in mind that we do need to be in an administrative prompt. I'm gonna just rerun that same uh, command again, SSH, the um, account, a user account on the SSH server, and then the local IP address. I want you to notice what happened this time. Notice that it's not telling me, can you verify the host, or can you verify the identity of the SSH server? All right, why is that? All right, well, we're only doing it once, and when we do that once, that key that it presented to us and that fingerprint, if we open up our file explorer and I get down into the user profile, and to do this, I can just select on the left-hand side this PC, local disk C, users, and for me, in this case, I'm connecting, I'm logged in on my local SSH client here. I'm logged into the local machine as student01. All right, when I look in here, there's an SSH folder. Notice that SSH folder right there. That's important because inside of this .SSH folder in my user profile is this known host file as well. Now, it just calls it a generic file. If I double click on it, it's gonna ask me what application do I wanna open this with? And for our uh, purposes here, I'm just gonna choose Notepad. And what I want you to see, ladies and gentlemen, and let me do a little word wrap here, is I want you to see, notice the IP address, and I'll zoom in a little bit, make it a little easier to see. Notice the IP address of the OpenSSH server. Notice the key that it was telling us about a little bit, it tells us a little bit more here, but it did see, it say that that was the elliptical curve digital um, uh, st uh, standard algorithm, if you will, D uh, ECDSA. And here is what's known as the public key. The reason it's not prompting me for that key again is because the first time it did, and I said yes, it installed that key right here, and it isn't asking me for it again. That's one of the purpose or the important things about SSH authentication. And it's one of the things that you want to make sure that you're aware of what that destination server is so that you don't have to worry about any kind of malicious nature behind it. Let me, let's verify this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close that file down and I'm actually going to exit out of this, uh, this SSH connection. And I'm going to SSH into a completely different SSH full, um, server and we're going to bring back up that known host file again and let's see how it's changed. So for me, I'm going to type SSH and then a space and I'm going to type my username, W. Brian, and I'm going to connect to another open SSH server that I've got installed. And for me, I'll go ahead and type the local IP address. So it's at 10.0.10. 10.112, and I'm gonna hit enter. Now notice it's challenging me again. Why is it challenging me for the, with this information again? It's telling me this is the key, and here's the fingerprint. Are you sure you wanna continue connecting? Again, because who knows who stood this server up? Now, transparency, I did, so I trust it, and I'm gonna say yes, and I'm gonna hit enter, and it's gonna ask me to authenticate. And when I do, you can see I'm now logged in to a completely different SSH server. But the purpose of that is to show you how does that look now in our known host file that we have here. Well, let's go ahead and let's reopen it back up and take a look. Well, now what you'll see is that I have two different keys. I've got the key to the open SSH server that we've shown you how to stand up in previous videos, but I also got the key to the different server that's just kind of off screen here, you know, kind of like having the turkey bake that I didn't show you how to install. And the important part of this is remembering that these are completely different servers and understanding where that information gets stored. It's part of the basic authentication for SSH. All right, also keep in mind that when you are going to authenticate to the SSH server, you have to have an account on that local server. Let's go ahead and verify that. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna save any changes and we're gonna switch over to our SSH server. And what I'm gonna do is just basic user creation, right? We're just gonna right click on our desktop. We're gonna choose computer management and let's create us a user account here on the SSH server. And then we'll flip back over and see if we can connect back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna expand out local users and groups. I'm gonna select users and what you should see here is that I have, and let me minimize this right here, I have that Student Oak 2 account, right? It's on the SSH server. Now, if I want, I can just create a new user 
and we'll just call this test SSH. And I'm just going to say the password uh, never, uh, never changes. This is not something you should ever do in a production environment. I'm just doing this to teach you where that authentication is coming from and how you can create users that can then use SSH uh, to connect um, via SSH to connect to your servers. So let's go ahead. We'll close that. You'll see that we have our test SSH account there and ready to go. All right. We're going to switch back over to our client and we're going to try to connect back. We're going to type SSH space. And that was our test SSH user at, and then the IP address of the local server, and we're going to go ahead and type its IP address. Now notice that it isn't prompting me with a, a val uh, validation of that host key again. All right, it does that once. And then every user that connects after that, uh, it's not going to reconfirm that you trust the host. So it is important to make sure that you trust the SSH server that you're connecting to. And then for me here, we'll put in our super secret password. Now this one, when it connects, you can see it kind of glitched a little bit, took a little bit longer. And the reason is if I do a DIR here is because that user had never logged on to the SSH server before. So what it did is it pulled a default profile down and essentially slaps the user name on it creates its uh, the new user profile but there you go ladies and gentlemen that is something uh, of the behind the scenes when it comes to basic authentication in your Windows 10 open SSH server